Hi, it's Scotty Alcon here with the filmmakers behind Raiders. We have Tim Skousen and Jeremy Kuhn. Um, what, what a crazy idea to, for someone to think, let's do a shot for shot. Like, can you give us the, the, the background behind this whole crazy adventure and showing it and documenting it? And this is, it's, it's a wild theory, it's a wild idea for someone to do. I mean, to actually shoot the, do the, do the remake, one of the greatest films Shot by ever. shot, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, the thing I love about the story is that as a kid, it's kind of like, look, anything's possible, you're not going to listen to anyone. And I think it's that mentality that made that happen. Because as an adult, why would you even bother trying to do that? It's, it's ridiculous. But as a kid, that's the way you show that you love or idolize something, is the only way you can really do that is either be that character or remake it. And I think it's that love of uh, Raiders that really was behind them doing this. That was the way of them showing their appreciation. Kind of gets at this whole like fandom and how crazy fans can be. I think that's kind of what you guys are touching upon with this, um, but in a good way. You know, this is what you can do if, even if you're doing a shot for shot remake, you're, you're, you're behind it completely. Can y'all talk about just the idea of fans. I mean, you guys, with your background with Napoleon, you guys have fanatical people about that that mm. still have vote for Pedro, yeah. which, by the way, might be a good thing in the upcoming election presidential <laughs> race, but whatever. Yeah. But you know what I mean? You, yeah. you have people that, that really love what you guys have done. Can you all reflect on that and how that... Yeah, I mean, I think everyone's a fan of something. Otherwise, you're a really boring person. Like, uh, yeah, it's really... it's. It's kind of weird because we've been on the side of Napoleon. We have people who are like fanatics and love it, and uh, sometimes I don't know how to react because it's like we've been with it so long, but it's something that's like part of their childhood, like how I feel about Raiders or we feel about Star Wars and these other films. Uh, yeah, I just think being a fan's fun and like to be the creator of something or be involved in something that someone feels that way about with Napoleon is a really really special feeling because I don't think there's a lot of films. Like to, to to even be honored as piece someone feeling that way about something, because I don't think there's a ton of film like projects that fall into that. At least that's the way I feel. I don't. Well, I, I feel like the the fan thing <clears throat> is a, is an amazing thing because it's it's relatively it kind of organically developed on its own. When these guys did this, I mean, it was like '82. This yeah. was like before VHS, before you could even watch a copy of the film. They just like went and had to like, you know, figure out a way to like make storyboards and just do it. And what they were doing, like other kids were doing at the same time, but they had no way to connect. And you found like in the 90s and, in, and then into the 2000s where all these people started connecting and now everyone says like, oh yeah, this fan community and they're all kind of like clumped together and they get together at Comic Cons all over the world and, 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 and they have a really good time. This was like the story of that beginning without saying like this is the story of the beginning of fan films. That's kind of what it is, you know, because these kids didn't just like film this fan film. In between, they were like filming each other, and you really got to see them film their childhood. And it's sort of like we all see, like anybody that's a fan gets to see that little bit of geek that we all had in those early days, and like the way that we, the, the different ways that we expressed it. And so that I think is what we kind of captured with Raiders is like the early days of fandom. You know, is is geekdom something that you like? I mean, Napoleon. This. I mean, what is that? Were y'all geeks? Is that a weird question to ask? I mean, I do you know a, what I mean? Like, he was weird. too cool. I don't know if I, yeah, I, granted I was in band, so I can't really claim <laughs> I was otherwise. But the, uh, I, but I think people are geeky about other things. Like being a geek now is like embraced, where I think it was not embraced, you know, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, it was like, it was a different story. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think everyone's geeky about something. Uh, At least they should be. Yeah, just, you gotta love something. I mean, think about like people that are into sports. I mean, they're really, they're geeks for sports. You know, yeah. like I love sports. I don't really, you know, I don't play football, but I'm like a huge football fan. So, you know, we can be geeks and nerds in different ways. Some ways are more socially acceptable, you know, than yeah. like, you know, putting on like your favorite anime costume and doing cosplay type stuff. But the reality is like, that's just an expression of your passion for something that you love. And, um, and so, you know, being a geek, I think is actually a really good thing. If you're not a geek, then, you're probably really boring. Wow, that's a powerful statement. I love it. Yeah. Um, I'm, the scoos. <laughs> hit there. That's a little insight. Um, um, I, the impact of uh, Kickstarter on films and um, completing films and making that ability. Can y'all talk about the, you know, being able to to go to different extents to complete films on a financial level? And you guys have, have filmed any films. You you know you've. Yeah. 
you've, you've gone down that track. Can you tell us a bit about that story and how maybe it's connected as well? Yeah, so my plan for funding movies is just finding rich people that want to put up money. So far that's been successful. But uh, yeah, the Kickstarter stuff's open a whole new door where you're involving people from the ground level and they get a voice of saying like, hey, we approve of this. I mean, like Super Troopers is up over like three million. I mean, it's a movie that was made, you know, 12 years ago. And there's a huge, it's showing there's a huge market for people who want to see like a sequel of that. So I think it's twofold where you kind of get free money, you get a, you know, you get, you get the fans involved early on, but it's all marketing. Like, they're getting all this press from raising, you know, with all these other films that have raised Veronica Mars, they've raised massive amounts of money all from their fan base. And it's opening, I think, a whole, at some point there's gonna be a paradigm shift where I don't know what the ramifications of that's gonna be, but I think it's all really interesting and good. Man, projects are getting made now that never could have been made before. Yeah. And so it's a really beautiful thing. You have to, what's kind of great about it is it forces you to think about your audience and your market in ways that maybe um, as filmmakers you didn't have to before because if you could convince one person to give you the money then you were all good and so you were just, but now you had to kind of convince, you have to kind of convince everyone. And so it, it does two things, like it automatically guarantees like when your film is made, people want to see it, which is great. Um, and it also makes you think about right from the start, like, you know, I'm, I'm an auteur and I'm trying to do this personal thing, but at the end of the day, like, if nobody wants to see it, what's the point, you know? And so you kind of have to think right from the start about the audience. So it's, it's really cool. I'm so happy that it's happening. And it's allowing for, like, these really amazing short films and long films and projects and all kinds of stuff. I mean, everyone, it comes from this place of support and love. And so it's really cool. And I, the only thing I really hope is that I, I think people that donate should, should have an ownership in the film. And so I really hope that that, you know, I know they, they just passed a law that, that allows that to a certain extent. But... I think you know that's a really cool idea that like not only are you donating, you're not donating for a t-shirt, but you're donating to say like, hey, I, I believe in this, and I'm going to promote it, and I want it to be out there, and I'm you know, and if I do that, I get a little something back too. So it, the, it's going to be cool watching it happen. Is it fun to to know that you know people like Eli is a part of the film? Yeah. Can you? <clears throat> that seems like the same type of you know for him getting involved and other people getting involved. They obviously love the idea of showcasing it. Can y'all? Talk about the people coming out of the woodworks to help out. Yeah, th so the cool, I remember we interviewed Eli. He was like super cool. He went to his house, like awesome guy. And one of the questions we asked him was like, why, why have you not wanted to, you know, do this documentary or do something? And I think he gave the best. It was really, I appreciate what he said because it was kind of like he felt that even though he kind of found him responsible for it, it was like his gift, gift to the the geeks, and he didn't feel he didn't feel it was right for him to benefit from it at all, so it was just kind of like, here it is, and released it, but, yeah, like, John Reese davies uh, he just happened to be in town, and I called his manager, and he, I got a phone call from him two hours later, and we were interviewing him a couple of days after that. Speaking of geekdom, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, Gimli it's, it's, and, and Sala, I mean, that guy's got. Yeah, right. it's just, it's a, it's a really fun, inspiring story, and uh, I think the more people know about it, like, the more they, they want other people to find out about the story, because it's, I think it's a really special story. Can y'all just kind of Final question, um, I'm curious what's next for you guys. I mean, I know you're spreading this, you've got Thunder, um, but I want to know more. You guys have always tested the boundaries and the limits of, of what type of films you guys are, are a part of. It's not just the same type of film. Napoleon was dynamic, this is dynamic. Thunder's very different and dynamic. What are you all looking towards in the future? Napoleon Dynamite 2. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's awesome. no, that's <laughs> totally not true. It's, it's totally actually, not true. Nah, it's a reboot of Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah, no, the, uh, the thing I'm most excited about you know, us doing, I would love to do the narrative version of the Raiders story, kind of like a Wonder Years TV show where the backdrop is them, you know, every summer doing Raiders. But you have the front story of like, you know, like a Freaks and Geeks or, uh, you know, Wonder Years where there's a storyline going against that backdrop. I think there's a lot of fun stuff that could get done there. <laughs> I think we should do the Dangerous Men documentary. Yeah, that's just like uh, there's this crazy film called Dangerous Men that, like, when it came out, seven people saw in the theater, and it just happened to be that three of those seven people were like me and Jeremy and another friend of ours, and uh, it's like this notoriously terrible and, movie. And I know the other three. Right. So we know the other three. It's this out of you, Cine family. It's those guys. Yeah. So wow. we were we were thinking about making a, a short doc called The Dangerous Men, who are the only people to see this movie. Uh, well, I shouldn't say. That, during that th opening theatrical run because afterwards the film became this like cult classic like it now goes around and people have like midnight screenings and everyone goes crazy for it but it, it's this film that was started in like 1975 then they shot some more in 1985 
then they shot some more in 1995, and you like s the storylines have nothing to do with each other because like as they go along, like characters disappear, new characters show up. There's shots of like people with the script on in front of them on the desk. I mean, it's like one of these movies like you don't even know how it was made. Yeah, the way I describe it is that imagine someone made a movie that had never seen a movie before, so they have no preconceived notion about how a narrative is supposed to work. So, it's really <laughs> anyways, we thought about doing a short doc about the, the seven people that, that saw it in the theater before it became this like cult phenomenon. And so anyway, so we'll see. There's, think, there's projects out there. Yeah. Well, you heard it first here at Diff. Not only Dangerous Men, but Napoleon Dynamite too. Yeah. <laughs> Coming to a theater. I shouldn't have said that. You. The musical. <laughs> the musical. And scene. Yeah. <laughs>